most of us have bad habits we want to break. We just don't want to break them bad enough to make the changes that you know are going to are going to reflect the goal or the expectation that we ultimately want. We just make excuses about why we haven't changed, but the but the real reason is I've just chosen not to. What's on your mind, Coach? Oh, happy Memorial Day. Yeah. Feels good, man. Holiday. It is good. Holiday cast. Welcome aboard. Crushing Iron Podcast, episode 271. Every Monday and Thursday, for as we said, 271 episodes. And we hope you're enjoying uh, your day off. If you're stuck at work. Hopefully we can help you uh, pass the time quickly. If you're out grilling and hanging out with your family, uh, stop listening to us and go back and hang out with your fam. Uh, But yeah, welcome. We just finished up a great swim camp and are pretty jazzed about a lot of things, including swimming. Yeah, swimming's on the mind for sure. It's not. There's nothing like to get out in the lake, man, and just oh my god, no. Um, I mean, yeah. Let's be honest. We're posting this on Monday Memorial Day, but this is about thirty. It's about an hour, just an hour removed of the finish of our swim camp this year, um, and there's a, I, I'm always kind of blown away at the people that we get, but then swimming specifically, we there's just so much to think about, so much to go into, and there's like you know you can always take a lot of topics from that, but um, before we go deep dive into that, welcome again. Uh, if it's your first time listening, this is, yes, a triathlon podcast, but we always teeter on all things triathlon and all things life and everything in the middle. Mm-hmm. And uh, we really do we really do try to make this a, um, a well-rounded podcast that is hopefully just super informative, um, balanced in terms of, you know, covering the technical and the, and the often misunderstood or frustrating and confusing parts of triathlon while also trying to answer those questions and incorporate things into the day-to-day life for the average athlete. Now, you know, we have things that are, you know, very applicable to people at the pointy end. We have people who, uh, or we cover topics that are also hopefully welcoming and, and easy to consume for beginners or for people who are just thinking of dabbling in the sport. So we cover a wide range of topics and, uh, and subjects on triathlon and life. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely not a, bl- a black and white cast for the most part. You know, it's, it's a lot of gray in terms of giving you the most information that we have from your experience as an age grouper and my experience as an age grouper and coach and what we've seen with the athletes that we work with. And then most importantly, how we can hopefully allow you to apply those to your life and to your training and your racing without having to go through the the traditional ups and downs that that most athletes do as they can as they get into this this oftentimes very complicated uh, and isolating sport yep basically it's a year-round conversation about triathlon and all things that sort of surround it and let's face it you know you're husband or wife or friends get sick of hearing you talk about triathlon so we're kind of a <laughs> nice outlet to kind of get your brain or they're they're just tired of pretending to listen that's what they're probably the most right tired of. yeah i mean it gets if somebody's not in the care. sport yeah i mean it, that's well you hit the last thing you said was an isolated sport and i think that is kind of the the, mm-hmm. the crux of this on a lot of levels is that you know we get you know people triathletes get pretty passionate and they they want to improve and they want to race and be around the sport and not everybody wants to do that if <laughs> i don't know if you've noticed but uh um it it's uh it's a growing our community is growing for sure and but the sport i don't know i don't have the numbers but uh you know it's growing it's, it's back probably to, growing. It's back to growing again yeah, yeah and it's back to growing. we're just kind of having those conversations that are on your mind and you know we we're out at races and we're training we're held, holding camps and we're trying to be relevant even though we're not like a news program or we're reporting who won you know certain events necessarily or anything like that yeah. we just talk about how to get better how to recover how to feel better and be happier and healthier and you know that's sort of our mantra and if you want to get into our closed facebook group search crushing iron group and we'll let you in there. And there's where some really good conversation is ongoing. You can kind of ask questions or 
respond to people and just meet new friends because that's a huge part of it too. And I think, you know, every time we have a camp, people leave with some new friends and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It is. It is awesome. It's it's a great way to connect with other people. And, uh, you know, there's you can do a lot of your training alone, but it doesn't mean you have to feel isolated or feel lonely and i think that's the kind of the biggest the biggest myth behind it is that yeah you can you can do a lot of your training alone or, or be you know in a different state for your group or your team i mean just like we have i mean 99 percent of our athletes aren't even in our you and i city um but when we come to races and do events for like family so um but yeah that's how we that's how we also like to treat the podcast um and we've had you know some of our more popular casts have been our how to not suck at swimming podcasts um and it's funny, like we we were going into this going into this camp, and uh, I always and we got some good feedback at the end because I always kind of wonder that you know those are always some of our most popular podcasts. They've always been in like our top ten or fifteen um, over and over and over again. And in our closed Facebook group, people post about swimming a ton and being frustrated, and that that's generally triathlon and in triathlon, like athletes' biggest hurdle, biggest obstacle, largest frustration. Um, and so I, I gotta be honest, it, it's always kind of it's always kind of baffling to me that more athletes. Not I'm not saying this is like why don't they come to our camp because we always have a lot of athletes come to our camps, but why aren't there more and why isn't there more interest in getting better? And it was kind of um, very timely. I had an ath- uh, athlete that I work with who always really sends me. We think a lot alike, but he always sends me really really good articles that are really good on reflection and. And just thinking about things, and he he sent me an article um, earlier this week, and one of the first quotes that I read on it, uh, kind of like um, a one of the subjects was called "The Chains of Habit," and it's a quote from Samuel Johnson. It says, "The chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken," mm. and. Yeah, it's a wonderful quote. I mean, and it's it really resonated with me just about a lot of things in life, but then especially in terms of swimming, because swimming is the it, it's a huge struggle for so many people for a variety of reasons. A lot of these athletes, like we had, we had. I mean, to get kind of give you an idea of the spectrum of athletes that we had at our camp, we had an athlete who. Uh, has never made it through like the first 400 meters of a swim without having a huge panic attack and having it ruined a race. And we had an athlete who's preparing to swim the English Channel next year. So <laughs> that 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 gives you like the variety, like the wide variety of athlete experience and ability and where they kind of are in the in their athletic uh, you know life cycle in terms of where they are with swimming to both ends of the spectrum and. And swimming is is one of those things where it's just so difficult, and I think one of the most often misunderstood. And this isn't going to be the how to not sick with swimming cast. I want this to be more of a cast about how you're choosing to approach and be aware of and address the specific habits that you have, not just in like your every, not just in swimming, but in everyday life. Because we we had an athlete um, who I now affectionately have called Swimmerly. Uh, her name is Kim. But her new name is Swimberly, and we were talking as we were exiting, and, and I couldn't like a swimming is one of those things, and I think it's it's indicative of of attendance in swim camps that people are intimidated by it. People, it is the hardest of the three to nail down if you are coming as you know what most people would say as an adult onset swimmer, because it's very very technical and it's hard. And that's also why a lot of people give up on it. Yeah, they get frustrated on it. They have created habits that they don't like. They're very, very, very um, quick to kind of give in. And but it's also a physical and a mental thing. And one of the other kind of like tidbits that I gained from this this article was he said, "Let's define habits. Habits are the small decisions you make and actions you perform every day. Because habit is also how you think." And a lot of athletes just think that they're not good at swimming, and they think that they can't get any better. And they're while they're thinking that, they're creating poor habits. And when you come to one of these camps, or you try to you try to restructure how you swim, you try to take on new form, or you try to address the the mechanic flaws in your stroke, everyone says they want to get better. 
but not everyone is willing to go to not not necessarily any end but to continue to move forward and push the needle towards i'm just not really ready to settle that i don't have more to give and i just think it's a whole different mindset that that is that hopefully should be more prevalent in triathlon because i mean if we're being honest a lot of people like to talk the talk i really want to get better i want to crush tomorrow yet are you are you really doing the work that's required to not just get better, but most of the times the hardest thing is to break a really, really bad habit and having like the awareness to know of what you're actually doing or more importantly, what you're not doing. And that's how, that's how bad habits sneak up on us. And mm-hmm. it's also what times and what oftentimes make them so hard to break. Yeah. You can't fake swimming, man. Uh, you know, you had kind of said something on the, uh, during the camp about how, you know, there's a, if you're on the bike and you're getting a little tired, you can coast, or if you're on the run and you can't handle it, you can just walk. But if you can't swim, <laughs> you basically sunk. And I think it is a, a, it's what, it's the hardest. It's been definitely, well, it's all relative hardness, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. cycling is super hard. Running is super hard. Swimming is super hard, but it's hardest to, I think, improve at swimming, but mm-hmm. you also said another thing that, that a lot of people don't think about because, like, swimming is definitely the shortest part of the events, right? Time wise, and for most people. And, you know, if it's 10 minutes longer than maybe you're capable of or whatever, then a lot of people can kind of give it, well, I got hit in the face, I lost my gla- or I goggles, and, you know, all that. You can kind of excuse your way out of that and then get. But what you said was, uh, what a lot of people don't think about with the swim is the ability to, even if it is that 10 minutes that you're slower, to be able to do that without with less energy and to get stronger in the water to the point where you can get out of there swimming maybe as fast as you are now, but with like you know twice as much energy getting out of the water, not zapped out, gassed out, and all that sort of stuff. And mm-hmm. frankly, that takes work. I mean, we went over a lot of... Tech, you went over a lot of techniques and different great um, points about swimming regarding sighting and breathing and all kinds of stuff. And I think, frankly, the one of the things that gets overlooked uh, the most in swimming is just building swim fitness because it's and that's the habit part. Just getting and, in and there. building swim, yeah, and building swim fitness is hard. Yeah, like it's it's it's, it's for some. I just I, I don't know maybe because of my background, but. It's it's like the one one of the three that it's like you ha- it, everyone wants to put a lot of work in on the run and the bike, but not a lot of people want to put a lot of work in on the swimming. And I get it that swimming is technical, and I get it that it's the most technique driven. You can you can just go out for a run, and you know you can't be too far off of a of you know a, a sustainable or you know passing grade version of you know run form that's going to get you from point A to point B and not feel like you're just totally failing. But it's hard to see progress in swimming if you continue to do this, if you continue to stay within the same thought pattern and technique habit that you've had for weeks, well, years. Right, yeah, because you're doing this technique that isn't right, and then you're getting stronger in that pocket, and then you try to change it, and then you feel weak again or something. And oh, and that's another reason why most people, and the and the other thing is like how difficult it is to translate your is, typical swim set or swim workout to what you're now going to be expected to do once you get to open water, mm-hmm. and the amount of thinking and non-thinking, and the amount of anxiety, the amount of heavy breathing, the amount of aerobic capacity that's now going to be in it, demanded to be anaerobic because your heart rate's going to be elevated. You're probably in a you're in a totally new surrounding, and it's like the difference between going on a treadmill to go into a trail, you know, or hopping on the trainer and then going and get on a mountain bike. Like it's it's a whole new world. It's totally different. So in, in that in the pool, the pool is that the pool is a treadmill and the pool is a trainer. It's a safe, condensed, controlled environment where you're allowed to practice. The problem is is that that isn't always going to replicate your real world environment to where you're eventually going to apply what you've been practicing. And if you're not practicing something specific that's aimed and geared towards uh, a different environment in a different race, then you're going to be in a whole heap of trouble. And it's funny, like I, I, 
when I start to work with athletes, like within the first week or two, they're always like, hey, hey, coach, just want to double check. Like, you know, my swim has this. Are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, because then the reverse happens after like five or six months. You're like, hey, coach, I had like a 2,000-yard swim. Is this right? Like as in because it's short. Mm-hmm. And and so I think – they get, I think one of those things is just is the not just the physical approach and the habits and the technique, but it's it, it takes a lot to f- focus on, and and that's why I, like I really respect and, and admire, and I just got to give so much so many props to athletes who continue to try and figure out how they can get just get better at swimming because it's hard. And and listen, like it's it's the the reason it's like that is because it's not instant gratification, and that's the world we live in. We can buy a power mirror now. We can see data. I know I love data, and I can buy this. and And again, like companies aren't creating products with more data because data is data is the end all be all. You have to have it to be good. Companies are creating gadgets and more opportunities for you to consume data because people love data. Mm-hmm. Not they love what it does for them. They just love it. You know, they're, it's like they're just creating an accessory that people love to purchase because people because that's that's triathlon. You know, people love to just buy shit just to, for the sake of buying it. Um, swimming isn't swimming is the polar opposite of that. You could you could swim and, and get better at swimming by spending a grand total of like seventy five dollars. Swimsuit, cap, goggles, buoy band, check seventy five dollars. That's all you need with a hard work and dedication and gym membership. That's it. Not the five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars people will rock, while they'll drop six thousand dollars on a bike with a power meter and these disc wheels and a three hundred dollar pointy alien helmet with all this kind of gear. And then they're going to load it down. Then they go out and they're absolutely going to blow their load on the bike and make it obviously useless. But they got a cool looking bike, and boy, do they feel fast. Uh, and then they don't even pace it correctly when it gets you know time to run. <laughs> no. Swimming is just, swimming is the polar opposite. It is it is hard work, hard work, continue to fine tune, and then you're going to end up seeing results. But none of it is no, very few things happen with swimming overnight. I mean, even with a lot of the swim analysis that I do for athletes, they'll send they'll send videos in of you know with a GoPro or even like an iPhone or something, and I'll I'll send uh, swim analysis back with voiceover and a couple of things. And while they may see like instant results in terms of like you know a five to six seven you know eight second drop off a hundred, it's not for like eight to twelve weeks. So they come back and say, "Hey, coach, man, I am down from like two twenty to like one fifties." And so when you think of like triathletes who who say they're all about time saving, you know, like I want to buy an helmet to be faster, but it's only going to make me like two minutes faster over an Ironman. Well, you could drop five seconds off your hundred for a full swim, two point four miles, and drop like five minutes. But it, it, but people want to purchase it. People don't want to work hard, and that's again, like that's just a, a part of society now, where we have to have instant gratification. It has to be shown digitally, and it has to be um, something I can see and consume readily, and not feel like I'm having to work really, really, really hard to get there. Mm-hmm. You talk about gadgets, and obviously I'm not a huge gadget tree guy, but I was looking at... You're like the opposite gadget. (laughs) I know, and I think that's because of that blue collar thing I might have mentioned before, but it's sort of... I just don't... You know, I've been debating about my bike, for example, for a long time, because whenever whenever I go Mm -hmm. to these races, man, I just, like, people wheel their bikes out, and I just kind of, like, maybe hold their bike for a second. I always just pick it up just to feel how light it is, because my bike is a tank. Um, you know, it's probably like four pounds heavier or whatever, three or four pounds. I don't know, you know, but, uh, it's a, it's a tank. I mean, I'll be honest, you've had it for what, like, you know, seven years, which is like six years longer than most people have their bike. Right. So uh, they get in. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely heavier. And so, you know, I did a little research about that and I started reading some things and, and it, all, it all comes back to, and this is kind of, I don't know if it's ironic or what, but you just talk about technique and how do you get better in the water and stuff like that. And I still think cycling is about, you know, in that regard, you know, people want to buy a light bike. And so I was specifically reading about light bikes versus heavy bikes. And they're kind of did all these tests about climbing hills. And, it, you know, it talked about how, you know, it saved a few seconds here and there, depending on who was riding or whatever. But really, in, in actuality, it's about your body position. It's about the arrow uh, 
your arrow abilities. And yeah, it's about how arrow you are. Yeah, right, and because they, they were they were they were pointing out like huge, uh, huge things about that is you know it's for like ten minutes over ninety minutes you know depending on how mm-hmm. on arrow you know just different things like that and then they're you know of course they pointed out like hey you know if you want a lighter bike lose some weight and and you know. Uh, heavy strong legs or sexy you know that kind of stuff and i i just think that that takes work too you know what i mean like working on arrow we get into arrow and you know and and the ability to hold it if for example you know since we're talking about habits it's like are you riding an arrow a lot are you trying to work on that are you trying to are you getting comfortable in that position and are you good with gearing and things of that nature and you know because it's one thing to go out there and ride arrow for a while but like up and down like over the course of an iron man can you hold that position i mean that if, if that's going to cost you 15 minutes uh mm-hmm. you know stuff like that so it's like i don't in long story short i've decided i don't really need a new bike <laughs> i just right, right i really don't but i mean but you but you've said it like you okay so that's the t- total opposite of how people answer the same question you know, the tough question to answer is, what should we do differently to get the results we want? Not, and, and the answer for most people is, I need to buy this. Or I need to add this. It's not about refinement of what they already have. It's always about addition. It's always about adding things. I have to do I have to purchase this to do this because this other person have this. It's never about at the core of when you look at yourself in the mirror. Well, just habitually, I, I probably need to be stop being such a lazy person and get to the pool more often and quit skipping swims. Right. If I can't figure out why I get so tired on the bike so early, maybe uh, it's also not just because of my bike or my bike fit. Maybe it's because – I barely swim and I have terrible swim fitness and bad technique, but I get out of the water expecting to be able to bike fresh and hold the same power. So maybe I should just address my swim, but that is definitely not the kind of fun I'm looking to do. Mm-hmm. You um, had a question, it's about, dude. It's about, it's about purchase, you know? Yeah. There was a question asked of you, and I think, it, and I've thought about this because as a, I still consider myself a, you know, medium, middle of the pack type, maybe a little bit better swimmer. And someone asked, you know, as far as becoming a better swimmer, what's the better technique to swim frequently or to do maybe a couple longer sessions? And I've kind of stewed on that for the night. And I, I, I almost, in my, I totally think it's frequency. Because, uh, you know, you even pointed out that doing 25s and 50s is a really good way to train because you can work on certain things specifically for mm-hmm. one you know for 25 meters or 50 meters you know if you want to work on your uh, breathing or whatever that whatever the little thing is just kind of parse them out and specifically work on it for like 550s or something like that instead yep. of but so i was thinking about it, it's like well if you're not really that good in the water what kind of what point does it make to go out twice a week and swim 4500 versus you know maybe 2000 1500 2000 like five or six days a week because you're not going to get wiped out and you can kind of you know because that's what happens too right at longer workouts your form just goes to shreds i don't know i'm just i'm just thinking out loud well no i mean i I said that i mean i said as much when i was you know and i think that the the hardest part with a lot of athletes to overcome is it it is it's the time that it takes for athletes to go swim that's always going to be athletes for most their biggest obstacle because yeah. they can, they may they have to drive let's say 20 minutes to the pool get undressed and go so they might not have time to do it but i mean i told this i told i think it was i can't remember who asked it but i said you know in order to change habits you have to do things more often times than you don't and so even swimming 3 days a week is not 4 you know so you're still swimming less per week than than you aren't swimming and and that's how that's the the fastest quickest way to overcome and to redefine habits because like like you didn't just create this habit by doing something like you know once a week right. or twice a week you created it over time and and so if you want to fast track creating a new habit or defining a new behavior you've got to do it over and over and over again you know because like you you know what you repeatedly do, and and you sp- what the way you spend time thinking each day, it ultimately forms a person you are. That happens over time. 
So you just can't wake up tomorrow and be like a totally different person. Like it, it, it takes time, but you can't just do it once a month and be like, oh yeah, I think this is probably going to work out very well. You know, uh, and because you're not getting enough practice, so you do. You have to take it, and you have to do. And running is the same way; it's about frequency, um, and it's a, it's a much easier way for your body to adapt. But especially with like when a, with athletes who have come to swimming later on in life, t- the technique is hard. It's hard to cement into your brain, and then know what you're doing, and then to keep that feel for the water. That's so hard to to get in the first place. You're just going to lose it quicker, and so people are always kind of just just chasing their tail when it comes to swimming and it's just it, when you when you learn to transform your habits and you learn what is required because it's not easy that's why again like most of us have bad habits we want to break we just don't want to break them bad enough to make the changes mm-hmm. that you know are going to are going to reflect the goal or the expectation that we ultimately want we just make excuses about why we haven't changed but the but the real reason is i've just chosen not to you know it's like the person says i just didn't have time to do x y and z well the real response should be i just chose to not make the time or i chose that these things are more important or this was not important enough for me to address and and it's still like it's the the part about swimming that still just again just like baffles my mind and we talked about this as camp is that Racing at every level is about energy expenditure, efficiency, and strength, and then speed. And if you can even if you if you have to swim like a two thousand, and your effort level is a seven, and we change your swim stroke or you change your swim stroke and you take the time to learn a new technique, and now you do the same 2000 and let's just say it's been a okay technique change, but you become more efficient in the water and you swim the, that 2000 at the exact same time, but your effort, your effort level is a three. That's a huge benefit for the rest of your race in terms of effort. Because again, swimming is about body positioning and efficiency. And it, the, the amount of pull you can get to press the, the least amount of you and the least amount of surface area forward in the water, but it is, and I'm, I'm, I will admit it. And, and while I, I'm, I'm so thankful that that I grew up swimming year round, and, and I know how to swim, and and it, it is, you know, this from knowing me for you know six seven years now is it is my passion is teaching people how to swim, mm-hmm. and I, I I generally feel like this out like coaching second. I really feel like I was I was one of my biggest gifts or was put this plan to do was to help people transform their swim and to learn how to swim and be comfortable in the water and, and reshape the way that they think about it. And I love it. But I also understand that it is a huge obstacle to overcome because the way that we sell things now is is that we've all we've we've almost come to accept that if it's not really complicated, then that's just not really going to work for me. Like we we want things to um, not not necessarily complicated, but we want things to seem uh, extraordinary. You know, you have to do all these things. But swimming is super simple. Like down, like that's one of, the, one of the first things we talk about. I can't. But swimming is super simple. Um, it's doing X, Y, and Z. And if you can focus on just those two things, those three things first, you're going to be in much better shape. Um, but in, in like in the I think uh, someone commented in our closed. Facebook group on uh, a crushing iron group on Facebook. And they said, Hey, you know, one of the, one of the very first podcasts we did over two years ago, I said, you know, if you're really struggling with swimming, shove a pool buoy in between your legs, do it for 30 days and come back and talk to me. Mm -hmm. Still to this day, people refuse to believe that. Oh, Sometimes I think it's sometimes I think like they just think that I'm like BSing, but I'm not. And I think also sometimes people think that we give out when, if we get out, what we do, we give out, 271 episodes of free information um, that people don't almost take it seriously sometimes because they think we're kind of joking or they're not asking us to pay them anything so uh, they really can't be serious because if they were and it was really super beneficial then they'd probably be charging us money for it I promise you it works and I haven't had a single person who's done it in my life who has said anything but great things about it and we, so we had another guy who did it I think he said he dropped from like high 140s to now he's doing like one low 130s and people still like, oh, I thought cheating, I thought using your pool buoy, you know, as a tool, it's cheating. 
and I kind of gave this uh, comment on it, and I said, you know, listen, you know, swimming is technique. It's it's driven by strength and technique, much like you know you made a great analogy the other day about golf and basketball. Those are te- those are technique driven sports. You have to have a you have to have a uh, it's a skill set. Do you think people trying to really get better at golf or basketball or any really technical sport think, hey, that tool would be great if I could use it all the time and it would make me better at this technical part and make me stronger, but you know what? That's cheating. So what I'd rather do is just beat my head against the wall, not knowing what I'm doing and probably not liking sw- and not liking swimming. I mean, golfing or basketball as much, and I'll just be fine. And I'll figure it out one day. No, they use every resource available to get better. So if you think that 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 a pool boy has become like some sort of like a cheating tool, then it's just incorrect. And but it's those thought patterns that that there are ways to simplify swimming and how people think about swimming and changing their habits. But the the biggest part, the biggest habit that as a coach that I have to create. Because I had perfect examples. I had this phone call with an athlete, I think, two weeks ago, who was saying, "Yeah, I said, tell me about your background and what you've been before, and you know your experience and how you think about things." And it's like, "Yeah, you know, you know the swim. You know, I swim every once in a while, but you know, I just don't really see the point, you know, and like putting in a lot of work on it because it really doesn't make up." I was like, "Just stop talking. Yeah, this isn't this isn't either going to work out or things are about to like change so hard you're probably going to quit because." The what you the biggest struggle for I think most coaches if they're if they understand the importance of the fact that this is a three sport, um, you know a three sport sport, is that they all complement and affect each other positively or negatively. They're never a wash, and people tend to just have this this thought process that the swim is a wash or any other thing that doesn't mean as much if in. The reason we have these conversations with ourselves is could be we want to sell ourselves on the idea of it's okay for you to not try as hard. And it's okay for you to be lazy. And it's okay for you to not take it super seriously. So you're you're just trying to sell yourself on your own BS that it's okay to slack off because X, Y, and Z. And so as a coach, you're 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 always pretty much your biggest struggle is is changing the way people mentally and emotionally think and that's how that's become their habit and we even covered this at this camp hours ago like you you're thinking your way to where you are right now Mm -hmm. you're thinking people have their way when they struggle with anxiety we have plenty of athletes at the camp who struggle with anxiety in the water who who are afraid to have a panic attack or who would cry i'm like you are per you're a you're a strong swimmer but you tell yourself that you're not so you tell yourself that you can't and then all of a sudden you aren't and you won't because you thought your way to it. And then you've just reaffirmed those those negative thought processes or I don't have to do this or even which is the worst one. I, I just can't get any better. And that attitude is basically just you submitting to your negative thought process of I can't and now I'm relieving myself of any – obligation to continually try to get better or feel the need to get better at swimming cycling and running because i've talked myself into the importance of it by just the simple fact that i just don't want to Mm -hmm. listen man it's been well documented that i've gone through tremendous struggles in the water with anxiety bouts and things like that and i think aside from the fact that um you know, what you were just talking about regarding people kind of think of it as a wash or whatever, but like people who are afraid of the swim or have anxiety about the water, aside from the actual swim itself, think about how much energy is put into that two or three days before the race or the night before when you can't sleep. And like, I've been through that process. I know what it is. It's like you start, you just, it's like uh, you replay that, you start thinking about that swim, you know, two or three days in advance. And it's, it's like in your head and how much energy that must sap. And like at one point, I, I think I've mentioned this on the podcast, but I just finally got to the point where I'm like, okay, because I wouldn't believe it, you know? So I finally said to myself, I'm a swimmer and I believe that I'm going to, you know, like I'm a swimmer and it's really hard to, I think for a lot of people who haven't grown up swimming or get into it late 
and then struggle with it so often to actually wrap their head around the idea that because they're you know there's I'm really good on the bike I feel confident on the bike or I've always been a runner you know that's easy to say but until you can say you're a swimmer you know it's probably pretty accurate that you haven't totally arrived as a triathlete you know and you have to be able to to battle that anxiety and feel confident about it and I've and I've I've worked pretty hard at it, you know, and I'll be honest, you know, like I swim with a pool blue all, all the time. And, uh, you know, when we go to the lake like this, I'm like, uh, okay, I haven't swam with a pool, but now I'm going out to the lake. Mm-hmm. And man, I've, you know, and I've been pretty consistent since last year at, before Louisville. And then afterwards, I, I wouldn't say I'm going, you know, four times a week, but I've probably gone two and sometimes three and four. Fairly consistent, stayed with it. And I got out there today, man, and I just, I really felt like, uh, you know, the pool buoy was not an issue whatsoever. I could tell you were kind of feeling yourself today. <laughs> well, I was trying to get in a little workout in between, of, you it's know. It's a good thing. I mean, there's a lot of people out there, it's, you're supposed to feel yourself, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing, you know, to, to have that concept. But listen, like, you, tell me that the swim isn't important and then go watch a race and then see people coming out of the water after a 1.2 mile swim and then you tell me the swim doesn't matter because oh. i was watching it in chattanooga after the swim was shortened and i'm thinking oh my god what if the swim wasn't shortened like people look absolutely gassed mm-hmm. after being in water for 20 minutes with a wetsuit you're right that wasn't hard they probably didn't expend energy energy yes you're correct the swim doesn't really matter just go watch just just stand out of the swim eggs of any race and tell me the swim doesn't matter and and yet it's just the the different psychology behind it it's i think it's kind of fascinating in term and it's also difficult um you know to go through but i think like somebody like yourself like you know as you're watching camp and, th- and think and the, the different athletes and different abilities we had you know we did 50 meter long course swim session yesterday as well which is like every athlete's worst nightmare and then a lot of like the environments that we have these athletes in, and then coming from somebody like yourself who really, I know five or six years now might sound like you know a, a long, a long time, but you know it's not. You know in, in the swimming world, you know tell me about like you know your thoughts of like what you saw, and then like you know remembering like your first few days at the lake, and we would do, go out there three times a week, and how you feel like that impacted where you are today, and if you hadn't have had that, where you think you'd be now. It's really hard to say, but I think it impacted me in a large way. It's, it's sort of, uh, we would go to the lake three mornings a week, almost for the whole summer, and go out there and, and mix it up and with contact and swimming with people, around people, over people, and doing that sort of stuff. But uh, the, it really gave me confidence that you're going into Wisconsin. But it's like anything else, I think, where if you pick something up late, it's just, you got to keep at it. It's not like one of those things like you did, like if you're a, I don't know, did something when you were a kid. And usually a lot of times that's biking. You know, it's just like getting on a bike. You know, you all, people always say that. But I don't think it's just like getting in the water for most people because they didn't grow up. They might have messed around in water and pools and things like that, but they never swam hard or never swam with purpose. So I think it created a wonderful, awesome base. And then there's been times when I've let it slide, but... uh I think in general, it had gave me, it's hard to gauge against other people, but it gave me like a, a confident level that I can really tap into when I put my mind to it. And, and once well, again, it's and, the confidence and relaxation is, is like 90% of swimming sometimes. Right. And I, th- I think, I think the best example for you and what, a, and which is really, I think, symbolic of how most athletes enter into the sport or don't enter is you you really take to cycling because in your earlier years, you mountain biked a ton. Mm-hmm. Right. So that for, for swimming, that'd be the equivalent of before I got into triathlon, I swim open water a ton. Yeah. And then now I'm doing pool training. And so, but most athletes, it's a different, it's different. It'd be like, I have been on my bike trainer for two years and now you want me to enter a mountain bike race. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's not going to go very well. You know what I mean? So I think like that, like your early exposure to what 
the requirements and demands were really and truly going to be before you actually really knew what it was going to happen. So, mm-hmm. like, five or six years ago here, we would do, like, I would host, like, three, it like, a summer-long series, right? I think it was, like, of, of either Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. It was three days a week. And we came out, and we worked hard, but it was, I mean... We always say like rubbing is racing. It was like the epitome of rubbing is racing. And you've always you've always said, and I think you've even mentioned on this podcast for us, you 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 grew from not liking it and staying away from to almost like purposely engaging in the contact mm-hmm. uh, towards the end. You know, and I think and so. I think just having that exposure early on to real world race style simulation in terms of what it's going to feel like and even into i mean to be honest even to an extreme you know it, that's and that's the thing is like you in order to make something feel not so you know extraordinary or scary like you almost feel like you need to not go above and beyond but submit yourself mentally physically emotionally you know psychologically whatever to that experience to make the other one seem a little more doable or not so um, daunting or you know terrifying for some people. Yet people will simply go to the pool, swim very easy, dear God, stay away from open water. But even if they do, they you know you might as well bring like a, an inflatable swan and some margaritas and go out for 500 and come back because it's still very relaxed. And, and, and again, like people don't, the, the very first bit of feedback, I think I said this earlier, but the very first bit of feedback, not just on distance of what I give out to swim is I haven't swam this hard in my entire life. Mm-hmm. And they're not even that hard, but it's, it's that mentality. But again, it, and that's what the, I, I'm acknowledging and I'm, I'm I, please don't get me wrong. Like I'm not sitting here telling you that, it should be simple and that it's not hard. I'm here, I'm here to tell you that it can be simplified, yet it is hard. And that's also why it is so important uh, to, to take seriously. And to like, we, like, and this is like the, one of the last things that we, um, we talked about at camp is we had an athlete who had no idea how to tread water. And it was always like, hey, don't, you don't need a ton of tread water. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, that's like a general life-saving skill people should learn if they're going to like. Uh, it, it might seem like in you know inconsequential to them, to in the average person, but it's like, what have you really been focusing on? And I'm not saying like treading water is going to make you a faster track athlete. I'm just saying, the things that you think are preparing you to swim well and swim great. Or swim has improved or overcome this it's probably not uh it's probably you're th- thinking about it the wrong way but just i think in sport and in life how you look at and how you you really try to seize taking over these habits um and again i think that's also why i'm, I'm always just kind of like have so much respect for athletes for the swim you know i'm very I'm just very glad that I grew up swimming around because I don't know if I'd be a triathlete to be honest with you. I don't know if I would have the the grit to to take on something so technical so late in life that is it like be me like going to the store and trying to like you know what? I think I'm going to learn Latin. Yeah. That seems like a great idea. <laughs> right. And having the the fortitude and the commitment and motivation to do that. I'm like, "Ah, eh, that's probably not. I'm it's, I'm probably going to like, you know, pick up a few uh a few things here and there that I'm going to bail." But that's swimming, and so I, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, like, I get it. I, I get why it can be you can put you can put off, and I get why. And so we, we, you and I asked athletes at the end of camp. You know, we always ask for feedback. What did you love about camp? What did you like? What would you like more of? Um, is something you'd like to see added? And then, you know, we asked them, like, all right, let's be honest. Like, our our tri camps sell out every one of them. You know, twenty to thirty people every single time. They have for the last two years. Swim camps, even though we do just as much swimming, we get like between eight to fifteen people max, and and so I asked them, you know, and it's cheaper, and I said, you know, do, why do you think that that's the case? Because they're the perfect set of people to ask, because they chose to come when most people would choose not to come, and and a few of them have said, like, yeah, I've even got friends that 
could really use this, but just chose not to come. Uh, and a lot of the feedback was where they're intimidated, not of you know that that you or I are intimidating. Um, even though people I think have said that I am sometimes, but I'm totally not. I'm a huge softy. <laughs> You're the most like approachable guy that most approachable guy on the planet. Except at um, six in the morning. Except at six in the morning. Yeah, I know that. But I think. But I think that is one intimid- intimidating of – it's I, and I get it. Like as an adult too, it's like – and especially for guys because you know, our ego is bigger than you know, they should be. But it's, it's hard to put yourself in a situation around people you don't know where they're, you're going to be critiqued and you're going to figure out and – I, and I think it's kind of like this – it's uh, – it's this a form of athletic denial because if I don't have anybody to critique me and I don't have anybody to really push back on my belief or the way that I've always done things, then I can just be in denial that there is a better way or that even worse, what I'm doing has been totally wrong and I have been like not necessarily wasting your time, just not getting the re- return on investment that you deserve for the effort that you put in. People don't like to hear that. And so I think that's that's part of it, but I think the intimidation part is the other. But and, and honestly, I don't know how to do a better job of articulating ways to improve that don't that aren't gonna feel like because this camp is like the opposite of intimidating. Like it's well, for us, but I know the athletes that came were had anxiety. And so again, that's why even why I have like more you know respect and admiration for that. So they came because they had legit fears to overcome, but but came and did it, and then overcame them and did things they had never done before ever uh, in open water. And but I think that's again like that's why I love swimming because it can be. And I think I would just yeah, I just want people so much to understand the joy that you can get, and it's just I think it's just so fun. Uh, for me to teach people with that, but I think it's also what makes water and swimming so interesting. Where I could walk on the lake, walk out to the lake like we do. The sun's coming up, and I can see like I would. I'd rather be like no place else. Like this is it. I'm meant to be here, right here, right now. And the person right next to me who looks the exact same could look at it and think, "Oh my god, I'm so scared." Mm, yeah. And it's it, it. You know, it's like that's that's just so rare. You know, in in sport, to have those two different mentalities and feels about something that's athletic and physical, but that's also like how important it is to feel like you really have all the tools that you're meant to have. Like, don't get, don't go into a fight with the water that you're only prepared, you know, with a snorkel and uh, you know some fins. That's not going to go over too well. No, you, know, you need to go in feeling like I have I've done everything that I need to do to be prepared to execute this the best way possible and also be prepared like that boxing phrase like you know, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth mm-hmm. well, everybody has a plan in the pool until they start with you know a hundred or a thousand other people at open water swim and they get punched in the mouth in the first 10 yards and then no one has a plan mm-hmm. yeah and i think you get a you have a you know, obviously you've been around swimming your whole life and you have a next level confidence about it and just comfort around water and i still feel like i'm close enough to a lot of people who have that struggle that you're just talking about when sometimes i see that lake and i'm like oh my god that's the most beautiful thing ever and sometimes i feel like it's the most intimidating thing ever so i can kind of waver back and forth but i've forced myself to lean towards the comfort side and that gets better it's just it's like you said it's not an easy job I keep working at it and everything like that. And one of the things, that's why like my input usually with, with swimmers out there is, is I'm, I'm usually more focused on the, Hey, let's just relax, you know, kind of like to find that in the moment, you can't finish the race in one stroke. You just have to be in the stroke in that moment. And like, we used to do a lot of those contact drills, for example. And I got to the point where, you, you can't fight it. You just have to roll with it, you know? And sometimes I still get trapped in that if I'm running into somebody in the swim where it's like I want to battle it instead of just kind of like, you know, you were talking about one of the best things I learned pers- this weekend was, uh, or at least was cemented into my brain was this idea of when you're sighting, you're looking ahead and you're off course and you try to correct 
100% on one stroke and how that can just lead to more mm-hmm. problems. Like if you see, if you're going off course, you just sort of like, a, you, you, you note that and then you kind of gradually get back towards where you're supposed to be going rather than doing a 90 degree turn and then all of a sudden you're going straight left and then you got to do another 90 to go back right and you're zigzagging. But that's sort of the philosophy that um, I try to use when I'm, I'm, you know, contacting people in the water as well. It's just like you can't go, always go through or over somebody. And if they bump you, just kind of like fade a little bit off it and just kind of like let it happen instead of always fighting the water and fighting the elements. It's just like you have to flow. But yet, it's so hard. It's so hard. Uh, you know, in terms because of it's in, it is, and it's scary that's the thing sometimes. is like, I know, and like, you're like, oh, well, I need to, you know, g- give like this advice that's going to change your life forever, and you can do it tomorrow, and it's going to be totally different. It takes work, just like it. But I think it's also the like your definition of work and what's really going to totally change the way that you think. And like, if you told me, oh, you could drop a couple seconds off your off this time and like it's it's funny to see people get so excited about a couple watts extra on the bike you know like 16 watt new ftp over like the last you know three years yet if i'm like yeah but you could um you know you could sell out or you could you could you could totally sell out on swimming and work hard and swim three to four times a week and put in the yardage and you might see a five to seven second per hundred gain you know, I'm like, yeah, that's not that's not really enough. You know, yeah, it's it like the like the little... amount of right. It's just in the, it's so like when you equate the, it's it's um, and it's it is it just it makes things hard to wrap for people to wrap their mind around and then sell them on the importance. And, and I think I think just in closing, like the 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 greatest way I could I think I can hopefully articulate it into why it's so important and the effects it has on your body is again just about energy expenditure over the course of every race and imagine if you can because this is i mean this is like the also the importance of sighting like we talked about at camp like it doesn't matter if i make you faster that if i can't make you go in the right direction or in some straight line then you're just going to go further and faster faster in the wrong direction so let's say you you know you're a guy who swam you know a a 1.2 mile 70.3 swim but yet you swam an extra 220 yards because you couldn't sight correctly and you were a little bit slower. So you swam longer for more distance, expending more energy to go slower. Yet, if we can make you faster and swim straighter you're not, and more efficient, you're going to spend less energy to go to a shorter distance with shorter time. All you have to do, or as like I would hope and think, is common sense of think, oh, I, I can totally see how that could change my entire day and how I feel the first few minutes on the bike or how that translates. Cause I think one of the most common mistakes that people have in thinking is that they don't allocate or understand the amount of energy that they're going to use for a Olympic swim or a 1.2 mile swim or a 2.4 mile swim before they're going to do these long days. So they think, Oh, I've been training, you know, and, and I'm in my, my race pace is like, you know, 19.2 miles an hour. And I expect to do that on race day. And then they go out and they have an hour and 20 hour and 25 minute hard swim where they haven't hydrated and they're expending energy and they're kicking their legs a lot and they are huffing and puffing and they're in a wetsuit and they think, Oh, but I should totally be prepared to swim just as or to bike just as fresh with just amount of time my arms are going to feel totally great to stay in aero and not have to sit up and why does this feel harder and why can't i hold it but then if i make myself hold that 19.2 then why does my run fall apart you know and, and it's that domino effect that we always address in that maybe is it wasn't that your run sucked or your run sucks quote unquote maybe it was that you bike too hard or maybe it was that your bike nutrition um, wasn't where it should have been, you know. And it's like um, the same article I read that Mark sent me. It was like measure backwards versus. It's about measuring backwards versus measuring forwards, and how we always want to look forward to make our our, uh, you know, to to address goals or new expectations. But you really should be looking backwards, you know, on on what you just did and now how can we make it a little 
bit better. So most that say, oh, I had a crappy run, so it must it's got to be that run fitness. I got to run more. I got to do more, more workouts. Okay, well, let's also work our way backwards since, again, this is one sport made of three sports. So maybe it wasn't the run. Maybe it's how you just started the day, and then you didn't change your approach. You didn't change your game plan. You just fell right into what you thought you should be, but you weren't as prepared as you thought. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's not that your bike really is struggling as much as you think on racing. Maybe it's that you're not swimming enough. But people, for some reason, people never make their way all the way back to the swim. It always stops. Like, ah, my run was terrible. It's got to be my run. I just got to you know, do more speed work because you know, I got to have speed work to run 26 miles. It's all about my 800s. And like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. the bike wasn't that strong, but it couldn't have been. It couldn't have been because I was just totally waxed from the swim. You know, it could be, it's just got to be out the bike. I got, I probably needed like a new aero helmet, probably need a new fit. Um, something's just not working out. It's like just, just continually work your way back backwards to what like legit makes the most sense but again like we you know convincing ourselves that the swim isn't important is just allowing ourselves the opportunity to not feel guilty about not doing it and so what is always and that's just it's common it's just you know it's human nature we'll just funnel our thoughts and thinking you know into where we are most comfortable that will allow us to keep feeling like we're correct. Mm. You know, you're never, you're never going to think your way into proving yourself wrong. That's just not, that's just not how we're wired. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I really thought hard about it. Man, have I been totally doing this wrong? It's, we're always going to think our way into what's comfortable or what we think we know is right. Not that's going to challenge us to do differently or to grow in a different way. Yeah. Now think about it this way. When you go to a pool and you're, casually you're safe you're there's no you know obstacles whatsoever nobody's even at the pool you you got your land yourself and you you know crank out an easy couple thousand right and all right then you feel pretty good getting out you're not like but if you go work hard for 3500 and you're doing you know 50 repeats and you're doing it all hard and then you know that's the old thing about people are just ravenous after they swim hard they're just so hungry so hungry they could eat anything and all the expenditure of energy that you're doing when you're swimming hard and then you get into a half or 70.3 swim and you're thinking well i'm just going to do that 2000 feeling thing that you know easy swim or whatever but 150 mm -hmm. yards into it you hit somebody then all of a sudden you're like flares go up and your anxiety peaks and the next thing you know you're doing like a hundred percent effort for the next you know like mm -hmm. you know 50 and you're not used to that so that's to me what happens a lot of times, I think, in swimming is people who aren't super comfortable and they're not in the fitness and they don't, they, they're not able to control their heart rate and things like that and their pace and their energy, they end up going way over. You know, let's just say it's the 80% uh, rule where you go 80% during your half. They're, they're going to be peaking in the swim right out of the gate. And I think that that goes unnoticed as anxiety or all these other things but if you the minute you get anxiety and i've been there you start you know dog paddling and you know your arms go twice as fast and you're starting to kick but you're vertical in the water all these things and everything goes to hell and that you cannot underestimate the energy output there that how that's going to affect your next stages well i mean you use such a great point and and it's all i'll use a bike example first it's <laughs> that a lot of the reason why people like you know, like sticking to your game plan and executing it is a is a hard thing to do, but it, and it's because it's such a long day and so many psychological and emotional factors come into play that tease you into making you believe that you don't have to do that. And cycling is 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 always the one that people refer to, you know, or running coming out of the gate too fast. But mostly in cycling is that you know people are afraid to let other people go. And so they, they quit running their own race and sticking to their game plan, whether it's heart rate, perceived effort, watts, whatever. And somebody else comes up and they just can't let them go. Mm. And they got to go with them. Yep. You know, that, that, that phrase, I had to. No, you didn't. <laughs> Stop telling me you had to. You know, there's like, there's like very few things in life you have to do. Like, you know, like listen to your wife. That's a have to. Everything else in life is like optional. So like, oh, I have to, I have to. No, you didn't. You didn't have to. You just, you just, you, your will and determination to show restraint was not as great as your want and drive to massage your own ego for just a moment. So that's the bike. On the swim, it really is no different, but it's not about the ego. 
people because we talked about this today when we did we did mass swim starts and and start which is very you know panic driven for a lot of athletes is that they totally lose themselves and they totally change themselves like their stroke and their game plan has now suddenly changed because of us in the environment. You got cut so off there. So I must Why now did, participate. Sorry. You faded out there. That's all right. You, uh, oh, can, dang, it, was, it, was a, it was not a good time to fade. I was nailing it. I know, but it was a key point that didn't get heard, I don't think. so. No, uh, it was the last thing you heard me say. Um, that's a good question, man. It was You faded... Uh, Let me just start over then. Yeah. I can start over. Just so, the swim. J- talking about the swim. Yeah, the swim. So, like, people do this in swim all the time, and that's why I think so many athletes struggle with the first 200 meters is that they that they, they get punched in the mouth and their game plan goes goes out the window. And so what happens is, is athletes now participate in this new environment, in this new chaos as almost a requirement. And what you're doing is you're just feeding into this new this new obstacle, this new chaos, this new anxiety, which is fast-paced everything that you're not prepared to do. And that's why anxiety and fear and panic consumes you because you went out telling yourself, "Okay, I need to I need to run my own race, I need to swim my own swim." Whatever whatever mantra you're telling yourself. But as soon as you get with like it's like a it's like swimming's version of like the what they call like the mob mentality. People participating in things they would never normally participate in, but they get swept up in this mob of of people doing things and they just do them because they're doing them. You know, because everyone else is. And that is the mass start in swimming. People are running over, people are acting chaotic, people are are panicking, people are going way too fast and you just file right in. You know, it, it's not like you're on the interstate everybody's going you know they're like oh we should go with the flow of traffic not if the flow of traffic is 120 <laughs> you know maybe you should rethink what lane you're in and kind of veer over you know like 70 75 80 okay fine you know whatever um but not if they're going 120 but so many athletes that that goes out the window and you consume and become what your environment is and that's always usually just like mass hysteria or people moving way too fast for what they're physiologically prepare to do based on the swimming that they've done and that is in fact why people panic and have horrible starts to races because they never swim hard ever or their version of swimming hard is very low yet the very first thing they do in a race in a day that's going to take them anywhere from three hours to 16 hours they're going to now try to go as fast as they possibly can in the first two minutes of that day and that's just one of the many ways that you can ruin a race is, is not to just own your own space and swim your swim and be smart and let everyone else do their own thing instead of trying to be so reactionary and just have that like swim mob mentality of I've got to also be in utter chaos and hysteria as well. That's well put. I think was that's that important. Man. I cut off. No, you're, you're good there. God. <laughs> but it's again you know it's like i think that's probably one of people's like biggest frustrations sometimes with you know maybe our first time listeners podcast like why don't they give me like all of the answers that are so easy and i can do them tomorrow this very second um it's just not that simple you know but if you stick to it and you don't give up and you choose to change these habits or create new patterns or you know or you know enlist a new behavior then you will see them and they're not just in like I think we would we could all agree that every habit or behavior we have in life isn't just on an island in and of itself. It also affects other habits and other things that we do. Mm. And I think that's like what's so important about about creating good habits and trying to break bad ones is that again, just like swimming and cycling and running all you know, that's like a domino effect throughout your race, where so are these behaviors and habits that you have. You know, the skipping the swim is just reinforcing a bad habit, and then eventually it's going to be, well, I can just skip these bikes, or I can just skip these runs, or it's not that important. It's 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 a behavior pattern, and it's you're either creating a great habit and keeping it, or you're instilling a bad habit. And I just think that there's they all again they all complement each other in either a positive or a negative way. And I think that's just it's something that I think we always have to remember. Um, 
because you know decisions it's just about decision making you know it's decisions lead to other decisions and those don't normally you know if you're making poor decisions they're going to lead to more poor decisions same things go with habits and behavior yep i've got a, a quick hack i'd like to share though a hack <laughs> No, a quick tip. Jesus. You know, you just said people want you know something yeah, to change. Yeah, call it a tip. I'll yeah. t- There's a tip you can we change. We try to stay away from all four-letter words, and hack's one of them. Yeah. Um, if you're a big tri-calc person, and you're you know you're getting ready to do your first Ironman race, and you're punching in your swim time, uh, my tip is to add 20 <laughs> seconds per hundred <laughs> until you can prove yourself wrong, and maybe that'll take a little bit of anxiety out of your swim. And then or hopefully you come just, in and, you know, you know, maybe what you thought you would, but don't put the pressure on to try and go crazy. Well, just here, here's another quick tip. <laughs> I mean, you can let me please. have the last tip. <laughs> I'm, you can have another one. You've got a lot of tips. But please, like, if you're a person who really pushes hard off the wall, please do yourself a favor. Add at least eight to nine seconds off your hundred, off on your hundred pace before you think you're going to hold it outside. Because I see so many athletes who I talk to, and they're like, "I just can't hold. My pace is just so different. I just can't hold it." And I'm like, "How hard do you push off the balls? Do you do flipping?" And it's like, "Oh, yeah, I push off hard." And I'm like, "Okay, like, do you not understand that three of those hard push offs, you're gaining so much speed with so much less effort in the pool, and you don't get those in open water." Like I, I purposely, and, and I, I, like I said, I grew up swimming year round. I could do a great flip turn and go hard. When I'm swimming regularly, I take like the slowest, most chill flip turn because I, a, I don't want to feel like I'm cheating myself. I just do it because it's efficient to get to the, to turn around and go the other way. But that extra push ball gives you a, a false sense of what you're truly capable of once you get to open water where there's a current and you have no wall to push off of. Hmm. But people will absolutely. And that's also a reason why. Another little pro tip, like the your feet probably don't hurt the next day because if you're biking or you're running, it's probably because you had like a hard 25-50 set and you couldn't make the interval unless you pushed off the wall like a rocket ship at NASA. <laughs> That's why your feet hurt. Like people, people don't think like, oh, I mean, you know, it's like, like I said, like I said, work your way backwards on your thought process and problem solving all the way back to like what might make the most sense. And Oh, maybe I was pushing off and like, using the balls of my feet to push off. You know, like I'm going to the moon every time I hit the wall, and my feet probably weren't used to that, you know, slamming against the concrete. Um, but again, it's one of those things that people, you know, like you said, the tri calc is super generous. So, you know, I wouldn't, uh, uh, like for me, I am without question faster in open water than I am in the pool. Well, that's what uh, I was It's say. still something I haven't totally cracked. The- Why? I am faster. In open water than I am in the pool. And most people are the exact opposite. Um, yeah, and I, I think it, about that. But it's, oh, you can't, you hate that. You, even though you try, it, when you try to go. It's just, I yeah, always wondered I just, about I, that because when I'm turning around, thing. it takes so much energy for me to get going again. But I always like, I wonder if I, I always try to figure out in my head, how could I test that? If I just kept swimming straight through that wall, would I be getting further than I am? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I think that I was actually thinking about that way this morning, like headed back from something. I was like, man, like if I'm in open water and I, I can take my first two strokes and I feel like I'm in an, uh, in my perfect rhythm. But for some reason, when I'm in the pool. I feel like the, I'm in the exact opposite. It's chlorine. Um, There's not enough is, debris in there. <laughs> it's chlor- I tell you, man, chlorine and sunscreen, too bad, two terrible things. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, yeah. Do you want to have a tip about sunscreen? Go ahead. <laughs> if you're gonna wear it, go very sparingly. <laughs> That's my tip for sunscreen. Because oh it's, man! Uh, um, but yeah, all in all, it was a, an outstanding weekend. And again, like you know, this isn't a the hack cast. It's a tip cast. It is not a hack <laughs> cast. It is, but it's. I just think it's very indicative of of um, you know when you see athletes who are just willing to go to every end to get better. And aren't afraid to put themselves in, in uncomfortable situations where, you know, they they're going to get feedback and they have more to learn. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, it's just inter- I think it's just an interesting, 
dive into you know personality and character traits and, and just human behavior. Um, and I think swimming like is is the one of the sports, especially as it relates to triathlon, that that just really gives you like a look into the eye of how a person thinks and behaves and what they're willing to do and what they're willing not to do. Um, because we, again, like we, we always tend to think that we, we at least want to portray like we have it together and that we're okay and that we know what we're doing. We just haven't gotten it yet. And, and coming to a swim camp isn't saying I don't have it together. It's just saying, even if I do have it or don't, like I'm still not willing to accept that this is as far as I'm capable of going. And I'm willing to put myself in a situation where it might be uncomfortable for the first few minutes, but then I'm going to realize we're going to have a lot of fun and learn a lot of things, and I'm going to get faster at swimming. So maybe this isn't all that terrible. Um, but so I, I do. I think it's a it's a it's just a little a deep dive into human behavior and thinking. But uh, it was a it was a great camp. I appreciate again all all the athletes that came. And I hope they had a wonderful time. Uh, we love doing them. I'm sure we'll do another one again. Um, these camps are amazing. We had our May when it was sold out. It was a tri camp. Our June one was sold out. We have, I think, maybe one spot left in our August camp. Uh, we'll uh, throw in a link in the show notes for that. Um, and uh, keep on, keep on keeping on. We're about to hit June. It's hard, kind of hard to believe the year's like halfway over. We're already in June. Um, huge month, and I uh, got a lot of exciting things. If you've never been, take a peek. Stop by for a visit at crushingiron.com. It is our one-stop shop uh, where we have more info on uh, all of our training camps, swim analysis that I do, um, coaching and training packages, our club, gear, blog, you name it. If we do it, it's there. Uh, Peruse it. And then, especially if it's swim-related, if there's things that you think we could do more of or you think would be a benefit, um, let us know. You know, we we pretty much created what we do with Crushing Iron and this podcast based around the feedback we get from our from our listeners and our athletes. You know, and that we just kind of, hey, do you want this? Okay, we'll do them. <laughs> you know, if as long as it's within reason. Um, and uh, we'll, we continue to try and do that because you know we we do this for you guys and we want to be as as much of a help as possible. There's our Memorial Day monster cast. <laughs> Yeah, we did go a little long, huh? This is one of our longer ones, and we're doing uh, yeah. this on a holiday, so there you OT, go. Baby. There you go, everybody. Yeah, we're working OT. Go grill out. Have a steak. Say thank you. Uh, spend, some, spend some time with your family and friends, and uh, we'll check you on Thursday. Don't be last-minute Larry. <laughs> yeah, don't be last-minute Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Get prepared for that race right now. All right, I'm going to get on my heavy bike and see how that works out. All right, man. I'll catch you later.